Um, I have to say that I find it really difficult to feel in any way enthusiastic about this referendum. Um, the wording around women in the home in the constitution is outdated and it's sexist and there's no denying that. Uh, but other than being generally insulting, it has no impact on the lives of women or carers in Ireland. Um, the paternalistic celebration of women's work in the home has never resulted in women having a legal right to state support in order to carry out that work. Unfortunately, the replacement wording making the provision gender neutral but still restricting the value of care only to the family means that this is just symbolic. What tangible change is this referendum actually going to have on the rights of women and carers of Ireland? Is there one? Because I'm genuinely interested in hearing it. There are over 299,000 unpaid carers in Ireland. That figure has grown by 53% in just six years. Every one of those carers provides an invaluable service to the state. But the state does not and has never rewarded them for it, has never even really supported them to carry out that care. The need for care is universal. It is absolutely essential for the well-being of children, older people, disabled people, or people experiencing illness. It's a key component to the function of any state. While care has always been needed, the societal demands for it do shift and change. We have an ageing population with life expectancy getting higher. The demand for care uh, of older people, for example, grows. But despite the huge societal changes over the last few decades, which have seen more and more women enter the workforce, the burden of care still rests overwhelmingly with women. A huge majority of full-time carers are women. 98% of them. 98%. And this is an imbalance seen across the board. There are twice as many unpaid female carers as male. 98% of childcare workers are women. Women in Ireland do far more unpaid work than their male counterparts. 15 hours more a week on average. We stand alongside women in Malta and Romania as those with the highest unpaid workload in Europe. The referendums we're debating today are set for International Women's Day next year. What justification is there for holding it on International Women's Day, other than an obvious kind of PR move for the government? Every year on that week we have statements on gender equality in this House discussing the steps we need to take to achieve true gender equality. And unfortunately, I think we all know every year we can just recycle and reuse our speaking notes year on year because the same problems always remain. We will never achieve gender equality while the responsibility of care remains solidly with women. Because carers are not just largely unpaid for their work, they're actively penalized. Unpaid care prevents an estimated 7.7 .7 million women in Europe from accessing the labour market and the independence and financial freedom that comes along with that, compared to only 450,000 men. Caring responsibilities make it incredibly difficult for women to progress in their careers. The need for flexibility, part-time hours and the implications of taking long career breaks to care for loved ones means that women are overrepresented in precarious and low paid employment. The wording in the constitution is patriarchal and insulting. It doesn't represent modern Ireland and it doesn't represent women. But despite how the current wording pretends to value uh, a particularly sexist view of care, I'm going to quote it, by her life within the home, woman gives to the state a support without which the common good cannot be achieved. It has never actually been actually required the state to give anything more than lip service. Uh, the state does incredibly little to support carers from a lack of, or I would say a complete absence of respite services to a lack of public and affordable childcare. The state often does the exact opposite and makes life actively difficult and expensive for carers. The wording needs to change. Most of us can, can be in agreement on that but there needs to be a serious consideration for what wording we change it to. 
I made this point on the previous bill and I'll make it again here. Bypassing the pre-legislative scrutiny process is a mistake. This is our constitution, so every single word, every punctuation mark potentially has an impact. Our role as TDs is to ensure that the best possible wording is put forward to voters at a referendum. To ensure that if we're asking voters to take time out of their day to vote on a proposed change to the constitution, that they're doing that for an actual reason that they're voting to deliver actual rights and constitutional protections for all women, families and carers, rather than a meaningless change in language. If a yes vote on this referendum does not deliver actual change to people's rights, I have serious worries about voter turnout and then ultimately about the outcome. I don't think I need to point out to the Minister what an absolute disaster it would be for this referendum to fail on International Women's Day because of that. Because this bill was rushed, rushed past pre-legislative scrutiny process, we have no idea, going into this debate, why the government has chosen the wording that it's presented to us. No idea why the government has chosen to reject the recommendations of the Citizens' Assembly and the Joint Committee on Gender Equality. No idea why the government has chosen not to recognise the value of care outside of the family home. And that simply isn't good enough. Minister, I'd ask you again to commit to ensuring that the committee stage of this bill will be taken by the sectoral committee with as much time given as needed and the report stage won't be guillotined. Of the two bills today, this uh, really is the one that needs serious examination. Changing the wording from women to members of the family does nothing to change reality. The responsibility of care will remain with women. Citizens' Assembly and the Joint Committee suggested an amendment that obliges the state to take reasonable measures to support care within the home and the wider community. The Citizens' Assembly voted for it by 81% and the Joint Committee passed it unanimously. Minister, can you tell me what is the point of a Citizens' Assembly or a Joint Committee if you don't accept the recommendations? If the government had their mind made up and were unwilling to budge, why did they waste the time of the members of that Assembly? Um, the recommendations have been ignored, which represent the views of the Irish people. That's the purpose of the Assembly, who the wording of this constitution is meant to represent. Governments have definitely used Citizens' Assembly to pass on the responsibility of making decisions to somebody else. Um, each Citizens' Assembly and Constitutional Convention has accurately represented the views of people in Ireland. They voted overwhelmingly in favour of marriage equality, as did voters. They voted overwhelmingly in favour of abortion rights, as did voters. And they voted overwhelmingly in favour of the state obligation to support carers. But you will not put that one to the voters, perhaps because you know that they'll support it. Instead, government have rejected their recommendations of an obligation to support the provision of care and are replacing it with striving to support. An absolutely meaningless term. Striving means there's no explicit requirement on the government to provide practical or financial support to carers. Completely against, I think, the spirit of the recommendations of the Citizens' Assembly who wanted to provide a legal basis for carers to be able to take action in the courts. Those words were chosen carefully after a lot of legal advice and a lot of consideration. Um, the government has also rejected the idea of recognising care outside the family home. Um, that's not a progressive change. It's not a step forward for women or carers. It's more of a missed opportunity. All because I suspect the government is terrified of the idea of having to actually um, have obligations to support carers that they claim to value so highly. In light of that, the decision to hold the vote on International Women's Day is honestly insulting. Because the state has no intention of tackling one of the major root causes of gender inequality and is actively denying voters the chance to make a real change in the lives of women and carers. But I've no doubt that on the 8th of March, if this referendum passes, the government um, will be kind of celebrating their achievements on women's rights while doing nothing tangible for women or carers and their rights. <laughs>